I'm just putting on live chat, you guys. So make sure you are on live chat. And I will, you know, as people show up, I will um, mention that as well. I have a spot on my glasses. Can you see it? So I do have a guest and I am waiting. So before we get into anything, we're just going to wait for my guest to arrive. I hope everybody is having a wonderful week. Turn the volume off there. I know it's only Tuesday, but I hope everybody's having a great, a great day. Um, I'm going to go ahead. Here we go. Hi, there you are. Hey. Perfect. Perfect. We did it. I'm, I found I, it. I'm going to type in hello in the chat here real quick. Okay. So I can see if everything is working. I mean, I should probably have my glasses on. That says help. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to write in hello. Um, so you guys, everybody, welcome Kathleen. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put my email in here. We'll give people a couple more minutes. And um, I do have a list of things just in case, uh, just in case we run out of something to talk about because you never know. Right. So let me go ahead know. and type in my uh, email in here because sometimes people have comments and they don't they don't want to leave it out here for everybody to see. So I'm going to leave right. my email. And if anybody has a comment, a question, you can send me an email. Or if you have a topic for next week or schedule a topic. Let me know. We'd love to talk about it. Oh, there you go. Good idea. Um, so you want to jump up here and say hi real quick? Nope, apparently not. So yeah. she got her screen time go earlier. Do an intro real quick. Um, welcome, everybody. I'm Grandma Gaines. This is Bohippian Life. I'm a reselling grandma, but... Some of our videos are about amazing things, amazing people that I find, and I just want to spread the word and let you guys all know about this stuff. And so, therefore, we have Kathleen with us today. And if you ask me, I know you didn't, but I'm going to tell you anyway. <laughs> my I feel Kathleen is an encyclopedia of knowledge when it comes to herbs, gardening, animals, and new to my knowledge, leather. And um, so I thought I'd bring her on. And if any of you guys have questions, we'll go. Yeah, and we'll go from there. But the All first right. thing I have is. For Kathleen to introduce herself. Oh, well, now this is going to sound like a list of names. Everybody knows me different. I could be Kathy in your life. I could be Veronica in your life. Or I could be Kathleen. Depends on how long, when you met me. All right. If you met me on Facebook, I'm Veronica. That's just how it is. Um, if you met me in the real world, I'm Kathy. If you met me when I was a kid, I'm Kathleen. I uh, run a business named Bridges Cross. We should technically be nonprofit because I'm definitely not making money at it. But my goal wasn't to make money. It was to do things for people in my circle and to produce things that they could use. And the only reason I charge them money is that takes care of the energy exchange and allows me to buy fertilizer and things that I need to put back into growing us cleaner things to work with. Um, so that's what I do. Um, hopefully this spring I'll be opening an Airbnb. I bought a really nice camper. So maybe I'll be able to expand that and create the foraging space that I would like to create. That's exciting. That is exciting. I'm About trying. About your um, business. Br would you say Bridges? I, I want to put it in the chat. Which Bridges reminds Cross. Bridges Cross. Um, two mm -hmm. words? 
Yes, and it's spelled B R I G I D apostrophe S Bridgids Cross C R O S S. All right, so I wasn't even typing yet. B <laughs> B R I G Bridgids I D S. So it's apostrophe S though, because she owns it. Gotcha. Okay. Cross crossing or cross just cross cross it is actually something that the goddess brigitte used to weave next to those that were ill in hopes of putting forth healing energy and helping them to move forward move on whatever the case would be um the cross is very unique if i had a picture of it i would definitely show you but it's not like this it is angled um and it's usually hand woven out of some kind of reed or grass that that's interesting well she took care of everybody she accepted you for who you were you know um she didn't care if you were downtrodden if you needed help you needed help if you needed prayers you needed prayers she took care of everybody so that was what drew me into that particular goddess energy when i started the farm i love it i love it that is Thank great you. that is great um <laughs> So I have a talk about your family. So um, just let people know, you know, children, husband, grandkids. I've been married 35 years. I have three sons. I have nine grandchildren and probably spend most of my time with my family. There's nine 16 of us, nine grandkids. There's wow. only three that are too young for me to babysit. They're all under that pottying on your own and stuff age. And I'm just, I'm not 20 or 30 or 40 anymore. So no, you do diapers when they do potty, they come to my house. There you go. I don't blame you. So yeah. um, does your family help? And to your... the best of their ability. But when you have nine grandkids between the three of them, they're pretty full live too, because they need things to be done. So I complain. A lot about, but really, I know they got a life. Yeah. But when you're doing yeah. it, you know, it's really easy to be like, oh, be so nice. Oh, you know, you yeah. plan to be here instead, but that's kind of rude and selfish. So I get over it. <laughs> <laughs> we all have that. We hey. all have that once in a while. You all behave. Sorry, cat interruption. Hey, apologize. They're mischievous this morning. The weather is right. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know how that goes. I have the dog. You guys all right. know exactly how mischievous Lagerth is. Right on. So, um, career. Have you all? Have you been a housewife? Like forever? Um, no, no. I did. I did housewife. I did deli worker. Um, I did will care for a while. So I was doing home health care. Had a couple dedicated clients. Loved that job. Um, got hurt. Things didn't go so well. Didn't keep the job. I couldn't lift anybody. And then I substituted for a while as well. That was the coolest job. Really? It really, it really was. I got to admit, those were the coolest kids I ever hung out with. I spent a week with sixth graders. Really? Yes. Wow. Phenomenal. I even ate lunch with them. It was so cool. Oh my gosh. How awesome is that? And they even asked me, I was like, sure, I'll eat lunch with you. Tell me what to get. <laughs> Don't get those. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, yeah, no, you get that. It was very cool. I love that part of my life. My kids were going to school at the school I was working at. So I saw them during the day. Their friends would meet me in the office. Who are you subbing for today? And then they'd leave going, ah, none of mine. Sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> um. Are you seeing any of the chat going over on your screen? A little bit, a little bit, but um, I would have to get right up close to know what's being said. Okay. I just want to make sure you can see it. So are you, are you in uh, live chat or top chat? And again, that's something I want to mention to everybody. It just says live. Okay. You're perfect then. Perfect. Um, Sister <laughs> Susan said she has some uh, new kittens behind her. Yeah. <laughs> so butters. um are they mischievous too? <laughs> yep, bye -bye. 
All right, Kathleen, you're going to have to hold the fort down because Lagatha has to. <laughs> I have to hold the fort down. I didn't supply handles. You didn't tell me I was going to need handles. You didn't tell me I was going to have to hold nothing. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> hey, get out of that. <sighs> ah, the fort remains. I, um, back to the career thing, I prefer working from home. Yeah, that's what I do now. You know, I grow the herbs and I'm here. Actually, I hermit a bit because I've really grown to love solitude. It is delightful. Mm -hmm. It gives me time to do the reading I want to do and create the things I want to create, learn the things I want to learn. And who better to talk to sometimes than a person that knows you like yourself? <laughs> that's true. <laughs> you know, that do you want to do it? I do. Let's do it. I, I do oh, your your hobby. Um since you're talking about your herbs, how how long have you been growing your own herbs? And um uh, I started grasses. three three years before my mom died. So my mom died in 2017. So like I'm sorry. That? It happens though, right? She was 88. So it's not like she didn't see a lot. She certainly a nice did. Whole life. Yeah, it was definitely, well, yeah, I was full, definitely. Um, but yeah, it was just, it, it was something that I was putting together in hopes of creating longevity for her, you know, because boom, we were working in the garden. Um, mm -hmm. So we started small. It was just a little bit. And then I decided that Dennis had to, Dennis Jr. needed to put some dirt somewhere. Thus, we ended up with a couple of holes in the ground that filled with water and it just turned into something else. It's just totally turned into something else. It went crazy. The garden grew, a tree fell over, and then we built a big, huge five-sided grow bed. And it just kept growing, even at, especially, actually, after my mom passed. It became more like there was something else involved in getting it done. I, I understand that. When my mom passed, we have always had wildlife, wildlife in the yard. But when my mom passed away, I tell you what, we had an abundance of everything. It was like she just brought everybody here. Right, right. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that. Definitely. I mean, we planted her as a tree in the property, so she's probably doing a really good job networking. That's great. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, that was that was a really cool thing to do. She's a she's a red maple, and I mean, where she stays that color, like a crimson king. But she's a sunset king, so she's a reddish orange. Wow. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. Do you want to talk about that and the process you went through and for all that? Um, I Well, I started out, I ordered one of those um, things that you sprout the tree in, but I couldn't find a good seed for the tree that she wanted. So then I went on a search, <clears throat> found a tree in Michigan, didn't know it was a graft, didn't have graft trees explained to me killed her first tree but my mother also died twice so it was kind of like some kind of weird thing right I expect this to happen I, I kind of I was like get the fuck out of here that just <laughs> happened <laughs> uh, and then I went to another place here local and they explained the graph and as soon as that was explained, we better situated her in the ground. And she is actually growing branches this year. So that was cool. She's not just a ball anymore. She's got some sticks. Wow. That is yeah, cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, it's that very is cool. super cool. When I mow the lawn, I drive by her. Hey, mom. You know, <laughs> all her animals are buried right around her tree. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Her dog. Now you brought up yes. mowing the lawn. Um. Mm -hmm. I've been told that you will actually mow the lawn around a flowering weed. Yes. Milkweed. <laughs> milkweed. Yeah. I will drive around milkweed every time. It is a monarch butterfly food and others consider it a weed. But if you smelled the flower, you would never cut it down again. It smells better than lilacs. It is phenomenal. And it's got really cool dandelion type seeds that float and blow and it's so necessary without that the super monarchs have a hard time making it back out towards susan 
That's true. And we it want is. them to go there. We want we them to visit Sister Susan. Mm -hmm. And I drive around tons of them. My husband finds it hysterical. And I also stop for frogs and toads. <laughs> I think it's great. I think that's great. It, Tammy, you're right. It is Make-A-Wish material. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I have milkweed, but I mm -hmm. have, I now will see it with new eyes and more appreciation. Wait till you smell that Because it has flower. always just been something to make me sneeze. Mm -hmm. Oh, but, yeah. Um, no doubt to that. It's got its side effects. <laughs> But that's because the flower is such a pollinator. Oh, man, that flower is amazing, though. I go out there, I'll pick them once in a while, and I don't like to kill flowers, so I don't usually pick anything until it's for using it for medicine. And once in a while, I'll pick one of them just to sniff it. It's like the locust flowers. I collect them for tinctures because they're good for your gut. They're good for your eyes. There's so many things in black locust that's good for your body, in the bark in the inner part of the bark, in the flowers. Uh, so they bloom every year. Perfume companies go crazy over those flowers. Wow. Yeah. And they just grow in my yard. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Yeah, I like it. I like it. That's what's taking over and creating my fairyland on the north side of my house. And locust trees grow off of a rhizome, so they're all connected. Seven years ago, there was one tree. Now it's a forest. They are literally all her children. Tree. That's great. And you know what? We can never have enough trees now, especially nope. with... Um, it just seems like I see people... Trees are being cut everywhere. 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 And we Forest. have alternatives. I see state land where mm -hmm. they're just taking ugh, 20, 30 foot of paths of yep. um, trees. I don't know if it's for the power lines. Are they putting uh, horse trails in? I don't know what they're doing, but right. I haven't right. seen why? where they're replanting. Right. And, and still, why? There's other choices. It's just like clearing land to pasture. You don't have to clear land to pasture. Cows do better if you diversify what's eating out of the field and let them eat in the woods and the clearings that will be created by running the goats and, or sheep and chickens. <coughs> Natural clearings will occur. The cows will eat better because there's other grasses in there. In nature, no creature went out and went, oh, there's too many trees. We must clear this so we can eat. <laughs> You know what? Now that you say that, uh, down the road here, uh, there's there's a farm, and they have a whole bunch of goats. And mm -hmm. they section off certain areas of their land every now and again, and they have these trees. Mm -hmm. They don't ever get very big no. or tall because right. the goats come in, and they just clean everything up, and then the next day, all the trees are snapped about three foot up to the ground. Yeah. From the ground. Yeah. And then the next year, those it's just beautiful. And then they put them back in there again. Yeah. It's really handy. That diversity creates good nutrition for the soil. It gives the goats the nutrition they need to eat because, wow, they eat way more diverse than other creatures. I believe that sheep are fairly diverse, but goats be diverse. You know, I was like, ooh, I want goats. No, no. No, no, I know. No, Hi, I know Sarah. nothing. I know nothing. And this is not the time to learn it. No, <laughs> no, nope, nope, like no goats. I'll get a donkey, you know, forget the goats. <laughs> really? My mom had a donkey. Well, let me say my mom, when she, uh, she bought a home in South Carolina and the donkey came with the house. Oh, cool. And she said that donkey, he, I can't remember his name. I kind of think his name was Laird. No, I don't remember. Oh, my gosh. But anyway, she said he was better than any alarm or dog they could have, this donkey. Really? Well, yeah, because yeah, it's just like having sheep. Anything happens outside when you have sheep, you know. Anything. Doesn't matter what moves. The sheep will let you know. And if it's something that is not good, 
the sheep will make a lot of noise. You know, they're a good warning system. Geese are the same way, though I feel sorry for somebody that scares a goose. <laughs> run. <laughs> just run. Just run. They can break your arm with them wings and they can bite. They have teeth in wow. their tongue and in their beak. My mom had a, she had a, a goose chaser one time when we lived in Texas. And yeah, it put her through the passenger. She was like running around the car. In through the passenger seat, trying to climb over me. Yeah. She was like, they are mean animals. They are. They are. My mom had a bunch of them, and I had to catch them when we moved. And in that moment, they learned respect because I caught all of them. And I made sure that I put my hand around their neck and gave them a little eye-to-eye business. It was like, look, do you see where we're at? You should be nice to me. I've proven I can catch you. And that I can get your neck in my hand. That's and after that, they would yeah, run for me. <laughs> yeah, they would run for me. I'd come out the door and go. <sighs> they were gone. They were like, mm, that's the big goose. <laughs> so um, I heard, and I think this is crazy. This is crazy awesome. It blows my mind. I heard you trained a crow. I, I lived with a crow. I didn't actually train him, but he did live here for a while. He did live here. He crash landed in our backyard and I started feeding him uh, fancy feast shredded cat food. And he would come to my back door every morning at eight o'clock and go, ma, 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 and then peck on the door. And I would feed him and he would come back and we'd hang out together. He'd ride the lawnmower. He used to ride on the front of my Cadillac. Yeah, he was very cool. I learned a lot about birds just watching him because, like, when he came into land, I never really understood the process until I saw that they can literally backpedal. That was kind of cool. I'm like, whoa, instead of going like this, you just went like that. And you could significantly see the rate of flight slow. It was very cool. And they love shredded chicken fancy feast. Um. When we moved here, I'd only noticed one crow, and he was huge. Right. Loud. Mm -hmm. We've been here 19 years, and we now have that come back and are here all the time. We now have five, four big ones and one tiny one, and I give them uh, dog food. Oh, nice. They and like it? Dog food. And yeah, they, well, not like super hard, but you know. Right, 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 right. And um, I just love the fact that they keep coming back. They are cool. I usually have a murder that sets up out back, but I don't know what happened to the crow. Um, I had a neighbor that was very interested in getting her hands on him, and I don't know what her purpose was. I took him back from her once. Um, because she had him locked in a dog kennel and then all of a sudden he disappeared, which they wouldn't do that. All right. Cause we had a bond. It was That's against his weird. nature and I have not seen him since. So what? Maybe she was like, I think she kidnapped him. Make it be her familiar. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. She, I think she kidnapped him though. And I didn't take him out of the wild because I talked to Mr. Pattern which is a field bio teacher at Faulkner school. And he was like, it's not necessary. He's not wounded. He just needs to eat and reach that stage where he can go off on his own. And he's like, and it's okay if he likes you. But this woman felt it necessary to start feeding him too. And then telling me, oh, well, others will cause him harm. No, if you'd have left it alone, she wanted him for herself. And I feel bad about that every day because I took care of him. And then she took advantage of his trust. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's probably in a dog kennel. Or a cage in the house, something. Oh, how terrible. That is I horrible. can't prove none of it, though. Right, She right. said she was, she was going to take him out to Allegheny. I've been out to Allegheny. I've called that bird. If he was out in Allegheny, he'd have found me. Do you know what I mean? You literally have your own bird call for him? Yeah, I called him baby. And it worked great. And then I'd say, I got chicken. And he loved it? Um, yep. Mm-hmm. I'd hear, ma. If you fed him cherries, he would 
pick all the meat off and leave the seed attached to the stem and fly off with it and come back for another cherry. Are you shitting me? Yeah. He was planting them in the roof of the barn for a while. I was like, oh, uh oh. Oh, How is this gonna tree. kill me? Yeah, he's <laughs> like, stop feeding them cherries or pit them first. <laughs> it's like, wow. Well, the parent explain how the trees got on the roof. <laughs> it was when the crow lived here, babe. <laughs> yeah, but he was so, very cool. Here, um, that I'm curious about. Okay. If you learn anything in the world that has nothing to do with what you already know, so learn anything. What would it be? What would you love to learn? More about what people pray to, because that's all I, I like to learn about. Um, I feel good. if we know better why our brother and sister do what they do, we can better perceive and understand their their place in that moment. And with that, you know, be a little bit more humane about our behavior. Um, I can't that prove that. That is very good. That is very good. My answer is so insignificant compared to that. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. So I want to learn ASL. Um, uh, oh, that's that amazing. Is impressive. No, that's, a good one. that's amazing too, though, because you open up a space for someone that sometimes cannot communicate at all because people don't think that's a language to learn. It's yeah. a very necessary language. I would love to learn it. Yeah. yeah. I, and it, you know, and there's I've a lot on YouTube. You know, yeah, and I was just thinking, I've probably been saying this for the past year and have done nothing about it yet. So maybe I need to quit talking about it and start doing it because I, I I, think it yeah, is but, great. I mean, you don't sit around, so it's not like you already ain't got shit on your plate, you know? I know, but it could be, it could be more video footage. Well, it could. It could. It could be. Okay, so now here's another one I have for you. Where would you love to go? Montana. Yeah, really? Up in the mountains and never come out. <laughs> I don't I blame you. I have been to move there um, when the kids were little and they were having um, a good land sale. They had changed and they were rebuking the land act and there was some things going on and wow, they were selling 290 acres at a really good price, you know? Um, and I almost talked big D into one that was like built on the side of a mountain. So the back wall of the entire house was rock that was actually part of the mountain. Right. But you had to have snowmobiles to get to the garage <laughs> in the winter. Well, hey, 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 it is what it is, right? I was like, what's wrong with that? And he was like, no. He's like, no, we're no. not playing this little house on the prairie thing. Do you no. remember that episode? Yeah, yeah. He's like, no, that's that is no, he's no. It's like I am too city for that. I'm like, you're from Casadega. It's like, no, that's that's more city than that. <laughs> I have I have some friends who live in Montana. They live on the uh, the bottom of the mountain, the foothill, bottom of the foothills, um, on the Flathead Indian Reservation. Oh, wow. And um, her house, when she shows me pictures of her home and property, it's all you see are the mountains in the back. So yeah. Jelly. And they make so um, jelly. beautiful um, furniture. Um, all kinds of all kinds of stuff. Everything. I have some of their things. But um, I would love to go to Montana. I would love mm. I, I would too. And now I've also always wanted to see Oregon as an adult because I only remember it a little bit when we were there because I was a child, a little child. I have little memories of like my brother talking to the seals and, you know, that such. But I don't remember it. I remember the ocean sounded really cool there. Uh, and I wanted to see Washington State. But if I could live somewhere else, I'd want to live in Montana. Mm -hmm. That's a nice one. Yeah, I would mm -hmm. love to go to vamping in Montana. I've never been to Oregon, Washington. The farthest west I've been is Kansas. Mm. Um, Florida. Right. I've Texas. never been to Florida. Um, 
But yeah, there are so many states, so many places I would love to go visit. Louisiana would be cool. Yeah. On just a basic visit. No, I don't want to go during Mardi Gras when people are out of their minds. I want to go when it's more like, oh, this is how we live. We're just normal people. We have a party once a year and it's kick ass. You know, I would Mm -hmm. like to go because I would like to go there and learn about the way they do things. And I would love to do some charcoal rubbing of the um, crypts. Because some so of that you artwork, do that too? Yeah, yeah, I would do that. I would do them charcoal rubbings. They're awesome. <laughs> oh, okay. I see what you mean. Okay. Mm. I was like, good Lord, woman. Is there anything you don't do? I thought no. you meant you are like a chart, an artist with. Um, oh God. Numbers. No, I can't draw at all. I, I'm blind in one eye, so I don't see three dimensional, which means you can't draw <laughs> three dimensional. <laughs> yeah. um, Ren, hello. Welcome. Um, welcome to Bohemian life. <laughs> um, what else? <sighs> what do you consider a day off? Going to Presque Isle with Sherry and sitting with our feet in the water. That's a and good we way. We do absolutely nothing that day except crystal shop, eat at, um, Oh well, okay. Chipotle. And then we go sit on the beach and do nothing. That Watch sounds like people. an amazing day off. Um, yeah. I have never been to Chipotle, but mm. I want to go so bad. I've been seeing their commercials on TV for that. What is it? Carne, carne, I don't know. It looks amazing. It's a chopped up steak with some right. black beans and rice. It looks amazing. Uh, I've never uh, been there, but I'm going. Right. It's delicious. The only thing is I'm one of those people that's genetically geared to not like cilantro. That's and it. They use cilantro. Mm-hmm. Right. So oh, I have to look at the rice before I choose a rice because depending on who was shaking the cilantro into the rice is oh. going to dictate how soapy my food tastes, you know? Uh, mm. Yeah, it tastes like soap to me. Mm. That's, weird. That's weird. But it's not because I don't like cilantro. I'm legitimately, they have proven now that it's a genetic thing and you either like it or you don't. <laughs> done <laughs> like well that explains it because that stuff well, I, mean, I can understand well i mean i can understand that i am do you like horseradish love it oh. see i i've not encountered too many people who don't i am not a horseradish person and um you know how everybody's like well have you tried it no i'm 52 years old and i haven't tried it of course i've tried it Right, and it's hot. If you're not into that sinus opening heat, why are you going to take it in? That stuff can be... You know what? It's just even the smell. Sometimes it's like I can smell something and be like, oh, my Lord, that has horseradish in it. Yep. yep, yep. I just, um, I'm, the flavor is not there for me. As a medicinal property, though, because it does taste like medicine, nasty, Um it has a huge medicinal properties for when you're having those sinus moments. Unfortunately, I learned that as a child when my dad would shove spoonfuls in my mouth, but it worked. It would open your sinuses as well as taking um, cider vinegar, water, honey, cinnamon, and cayenne pepper. Wow. With water, with hot water. You drink that, your sinuses will be wide open. Which so, brings me to another all right. Topic. Okay. You make an elderberry. Is that what it is? An elderberry uh, tincture or well, actually it's a infusion. Okay. Okay. I think that's what you would call it. Cause I cook them down. I'm not sure, but yes, I make, I make some elderberry medicine syrup syrup. That's what it is. It's syrup. That's it. <laughs> so does it take a long time to make? about three hours so that you cook it down enough because you got to add oranges and cinnamon and cloves and ginger and you you want it to reduce, you know, you want your water to reduce to about three quarters of what you started with. 
um, so that you get a nice reduction and you get everything out of it. And then I sieve it out and squeeze every little, you know, and jar it. But this is good for somebody who has like a, a chest immune cold? boosting. It's good for anybody to boost their immune system. Oh, it's just got a, a shorter shelf life. Now, if you add cider vinegar, your shelf life increases. If you do it straight canning, you still, it, it, it'll work, but you know what I mean? It's starting to lose its potential. So where you would take two spoon, one sp spoonful, you might take three because now it's, it's aging out. It's losing some of its vitality and Is healing properties. Is that because properties. you're heating it up more no, or longer? No, it's just a short shelf life type product because of the amount I'm going to say healing properties in it, the micro antimicrobials and the antibacterials and all of those antis getting together. I believe in what I understand, they live at their best for a certain amount of time and then they dwindle in benefit. But the stuff tastes good enough. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you drink a cup of it, warm it up, drink it. You know, it has honey. Is in this it. something you sell? Um, I haven't made any this year. My elderberries had a little bit of a ah this summer. So um I don't like buying them. I mean I can. You can buy them on Amazon and make it yourself. Um I do sell it for fifteen bucks a uh, half pint. And it does really well and it's very tasty. It almost tastes like it almost tastes like glug without the booze. Oh my gosh. So since you brought up booze, one of my favorite subjects. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um in one of our uh group sessions, you had mentioned uh mead. And I had um in all truthful guys, um the only thing I know about mead is what I've read in books. You know, so I know nothing. I don't know what it is, what it consists of, why it's not called wine, why it's not called uh, get, bring me a draft. I want meat and I have no clue, but I am super curious to. I only know so much. This is my son's topic, but I know that grapes is a totally different type of fermentation, even though it's a fermentation, it is a different yeast combination, I believe and sugars where mead is usually made with honey and other fruits like raspberries blackberries orange things to that nature not grape all right my son has his red raspberry mead i will wrestle you for that jar wrestle you it is such a del and it'll get you drunk quick and you don't even realize it because it is totally different um, it's texture is not like wine. It's color isn't like wine. It is very light colored. Um, even his most robust blackberry was not a dark color. You could very definitely see right through it. There was a bit of clarity to it. Um, delicious. But it is quite the process because you have to create the yeast, use the same stir stick from what I understand, and then, you know, make sure the yeast is building. He does only honey, so there's never sugar. It's honey. Um, and he does his best to do local honey. It's like two pounds of honey. So, you know, you're not making it every day when you're on a budget. <laughs> wow. Those, his mom's a honey hoarder. If he really thought about it, he could probably get the two pounds of honey from his mom. He probably could. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. But it is nice to have. He made eggnog at Yule last year. Homemade, fresh. I have never tasted anything like that. It was so delicious. We were ready to arm wrestle over it. And then he ran out. <laughs> He's like, I'm leaving. No, I'm just it, 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 the, the picture's empty. I'm going to go hide in the living room. You guys calm down. I mean, we were like, what? You did not make enough. He's like, well, I didn't know it was going to go that good. So the next Yule, he made it again. And it still wasn't enough. And he's given us cups like this. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> I need to. Give me a cup. We need to Give ask Anthony, Anthony if he's got any more of them glasses from his wedding that people didn't take home with them and be like, here. Here, you Cam Cam. <laughs> Cam Cam, you gotta get old Anthony. <laughs> if they've got leftover glasses, we'll take them for you all. <laughs> I take it this uh is an alcoholic eggnog. No. 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 Oh. 
Oh, well, I, I, I'm a drug addict, medical drug addict, so I don't consume alcohol anymore. I do use THC for pain and anxiety. Um, I avoid alcohol for whatever reason. Once a year, I'll drink mimosas with my friend. I, I just don't crave it. Um, I've never because had a mimosa either. <laughs> I, uh, it has a similar feeling when you get buzzed as it did to being on Vicodin. It freaks me out. And I didn't like being on Vicodin, so I definitely don't like reliving that feeling. Yeah, so I there's never that. alcohol. And and I it's not because I say no alcohol, because I'll drink that mead. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's right. not like that. It's just that it just works out that way. I, if it's respect, I appreciate it. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. I yeah. I'm uh I'm not a big eggnog drinker. I will um drink it for, you know, do the mm-hmm. little beer. Um but maybe I've just not had a a proper eggnog. Oh, I've never had it taste like that ever, ever. I have had many, many cartons and never. I tasted that. It had a smooth, almost pudding texture. But it was hmm. too thin to be pudding. But it was that smooth. Like, you know, when you spoon it off right after you stirred it up and it's still a little warm. This was cold, but it had that super... Oh, like, oh my God, what is that? And the nutmeg and cinnamon was like, Mwah. wow. Yeah, I was knocked out. So and you everybody would pass was. your expertise down to your kids. Uh, I, I will say that they had the genetic capability to do whatever they desired, and some things they took from me, yes. Yeah, oh, I'll only take so much credit because they are totally individual human beings, unique and amazing, each one of them. So. I can agree. I, I, that's great. I like to hear that when people, um, people say good things about their kids, and they're not just trying to brown nose them either. Right? No, I don't care about them. Right, oh, they're good or, people. <laughs> or you hear the people who are like, "Oh, them shits." I don't think so. Right. Right. I mean, I I spend a lot of time with their kids, too. You know, I babysit my middle son's kids every day after school. Or uh, pretty much every day after school. And sometimes it annoys the crap out of me. And then other times I'm like, oh, my God, these are the best years of my life. Yeah. You know, if I get 20 more years out of this, the time that I spend with Lauren and Jared, hey, Lona, Shelby, um, Enya, when I spend time with Jared and Emmett, and and Avery and Ember and Torsten, all these moments are are going to be creating the energies that take me, you know, finish that wisdom cycle. But sometimes they're annoying. Don't put four of them in my house at the same time and say, you'll be right back because grandma's going to lose her mind. I'm sorry. You know, I have mental health issues. That's all I have to say to that. <laughs> but I had four of them. Have you ever day. been taped to the chair? <laughs> no, but I've taped my children to the chair, so don't push your luck. Oh, so dad runs in the family too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh-huh. They would face each other while they were taped to the chair. Now you look at each other, figure it out. It's forever. <laughs> He's your brother. <laughs> that is hilarious. That's so funny. <laughs> so mm. I. <laughs> she is the one who told me about the cold shower. You're the reason why my daughter was put in the cold shower. <laughs> like she must admit it's life. less abusive. It's wonderful. That tool. It's wonderful. Um, I got to the point where all Tammy had to say was you will get a cold shower and my daughter would run the other way. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was he tried effective. Tammy's patience. I'm sure they all did, but yeah, kids do that. She it was the, being the only girl in in the middle. She uh, and then having me as mom, she was very strong willed. And um, no, if if she wants it, she's gonna get it. Even yeah, if you and then- put her in a cold shower. Right. Well, then she learned from Tammy too how to be tough, how to be, you know, she strong. meant business <laughs> until you turned around. And then she was sneaking off like a duck, like a duck going, Ooh, now that y'all not looking. 
<laughs> she did love you. Yes. All my kids love you. I don't know why. You put them in a shower, cold shower. You tape them to the chair. You wouldn't let them bring home pets. No. She's like, no, don't bring that here while I'm babysitting. Mm. <laughs> you want to bring them in the house. No. <laughs> She's like, this place is crazy. Let me go to Kathleen's farm. Let me go to Kathleen's house. Just get a little recovery. No rodents. <laughs> no rodents. That, that Dominic was horrible for bringing uh, stuff home. Dominic yeah. would bring home pets. Christopher would bring home the neighbors anything. Mm. Cassie <laughs> just would, um, for no reason, just want to butt heads <laughs> for yeah, no yeah, reason yeah, yeah, at yeah. all. Just to make her, maybe she was, she was a Leo. She's a Leo. Uh, oh, and they like to hear themselves roar a little bit. It's nothing personal. They just, any things build up and it just. <laughs> she had a lot of build up. She had three brothers. Mm-hmm. You're Ilana right, Kim. You also, it. She's a Leo and she is very powerful. I I can I let her go be mad. I, I won't argue with that child. If she is feeling angry, cornered, or whatever, I'm like, go ahead, handle your business. I'll be right here. She likes to take a walk up the gas well road and just scream it out. And I'm like, go ahead. Go I used to it. tell her, um, she would get in, you know, get in an argument. And if she was right. And the other person would insist that she is wrong. And I, I told her one time, I said, why do you argue? If you know you're right, why don't you just walk away? She's like, oh, no. Oh, no, I will not walk away knowing no, I'm no, right. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I have a problem with that, too. Yeah. Where me, have. I'm just like, fine. You know what? You think what you want. I know the truth. When it's an absolute, I know. Okay, this is a purple crayon. It's not green. Right. I'm not going to argue with it. I'm just going to be like, all right, whatever, and walk away. It's green. Sure. Okay. Just let them. Not my daughter. She's like, oh, no, it's purple. And if you want to know the truth, it is a two-tone ombre purple. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. (laughs) And her daughter's that way, too. And my granddaughter. Uh, (laughs) <laughs> um, how are we doing on time? Oh my gosh, we're doing great. Are so we? you are a huge, how do I say this, creator person? Yeah, I'm a dabbler. I like to learn anything and everything. And if I really like it, I keep doing it. So like um, sewing. Right. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. That didn't even bring me to some of my other topics that are on here. But when I say creator, I mean, um, you believe the creator put somebody in your path for a reason or put something on your path for a reason. Um, And we were talking about helping people and how you feel creator put this person. Oh yeah. 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 I had that recently happen. It was kind of out of the blue. I am definitely not a main player in our circle. So when this person reached out to me like a fellow witch, Okay. And I'll use that term, you know, um, from my perspective, being totally separate from what she had going on, I really felt that that was creator just kind of giving me a little affirmation that, yeah, you, you know, continue this path because there are people out there that are seeking that individual perspective that keeps telling them, no, you have to make this decision. Yeah, I would do this. This is who I am. What would you do? You know, because that's what makes it work. It matters not what others tell you to do. If it doesn't work for you, you shouldn't even consider it. You should only do what works for you. You will find a better path and a better way to deal with everyone. And that was exactly what came in. I didn't offer any like knowledge of the situation, just an overall perspective that when people are dabbling things that make you feel unsafe, you've got to guard yourself announce the issue and step back. You got to find your own words. You got to find your own protection. You got to, I can't, I can only give you so much. I agree because, because I I, could come to you and be like, Kathleen, I need some help. I need some advice, mm -hmm. advice. And I can, I can see, and I can actually hear it where you'd be like, well, this is what I would do. 
but you're not me. Right. You're a Pisces, Tracy. You are not right. me. <laughs> I'm an air sign. You're a water sign. You have a totally different approach to life. I'm a kind of bull in a china shop. So, of course, I'm going to do it big, bold. I, I sometimes am very disrespectful in how I handle some things. And shame on me, but oh, well, that's how it is. Um, yeah, I would never advise anyone to do anything that I would do. So sometimes I'll even avoid saying, well, it doesn't matter what I would do. What do you want to do in this situation? What are you looking to get out of it? Where do you want it to take you? Because only you know yeah. what is best and, for and, you. And actually, are they asking you this question to get um, like an okay, yes, yes, do it your way? Or are, th are they actually looking for advice? They're actually there. I think sometimes, so like this weekend, I definitely feel that it was a story being told to a total outsider for the purpose of basic feedback. So, you know, if you were in this situation, would you proceed this way, this way, or this way? And I always go to middle ground, which is caution. I always proceed with caution. And if it feels like necessary, caution and guarded. Um, this involved a group. So that meant caution guarded and this must be spoken out in the group this is a situation that affects many but you still have to find the words the time the space everything and so that was all i i didn't offer like advice just the basics this sounds you like you should be good careful human being you are <laughs> i feel like i'm me? a jackass I'm, but... i you know what i would it would be the person who would be standing there looking at me with their jaw and I'd be like, give me a glass of water to swallow my foot. <laughs> you truly are a good human being. Uh, thank you. That is, yeah, that's um, appreciated. And, and uh, the more I find out, the more impressed I am. Don't think I can't be an asshole, though. I can rule that world too. I got an inner dragon that will come out spitting fire and not even consider you. I will expose you for who you are, wipe my feet on you and walk out of the room, leaving you with your truth to waller in and misery. I can be horrible. And I know that is when I use my insight in the wrong way. Because in but those that moments. that would happen only if somebody hurt you, you or your family? Yeah, you got to push. You got to push. Yeah. I have worked very hard. Now, in in conversation with my husband, no, I'll snap on him in a heartbeat. <laughs> Caution, like will bite. Grandpa. Yes, I, I, you know, and if I'm grouchy, I'll warn him, hey, this isn't nothing about you, but I'm in a mood. So be mindful that I could sound like a raging bitch in a minute. <laughs> Gemini twin. Who's, are, mm -hmm. who's a Gemini? Me. Oh my gosh, you're a Gemini. My son Daniel is a Gemini. So now it totally explains it. Thank you, Daniel. That's right. If you I suggest... did not know you were a Gemini. <laughs> Grandma. I'm a day day after hers. That is um and my granddaughter is the same day as me. That is so impressive. My uh my niece, my brother, my older brother's daughter, was born the same exact day. Same exact year as Daniel. They share a birthday. Ooh, that's and cool. She was in labor having Jenica when I was in labor having Daniel. My my grandma couldn't get a hold of nobody. <laughs> and then finally, Michael gets a hold of her. Is like, oh, yeah, we had a baby girl, and Grandma's like, we had a baby boy. It was like with the what? time with the time difference. It was. At the exact same time. It was crazy. Wow. And wow, they're twins. Gemini and twins. Yeah, that's far out. Yeah, I think that's it's cool. Out. Yeah. I mean, just Lauren being so like my mother in law was also born on June seventh, which my husband thought, Oh, that's even more reason to marry this woman that she shares the same birthday with my mom. Then later he found out I'm not your mom. But that's okay. He was still cool with it, but he found out I'm not as nice as your mom. Uh, well, moms have to be nice. That's just, oh, you know. She was, she was a saint, I swear. She was one of those people that you just hoped you could be a little bit like before you left the world. She just warmed my heart no matter what. 
She was so good to her kids. Incredible woman. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Treated me an outsider with um, a shady past because of my parents with absolute respect. Well, that's because you, n nobody should be judged because of somebody else. That's right. But you know and what that's, happens that's, anyway. <laughs> that's, it does. You're right. It is. It's profiling and it's wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it um, is definitely. So you total, total different subject here. Okay. Have built sweat lodges on your property. Yes, yes ma'am. That's awesome. Yes. That's something I've always been interested in, thought would be really neat. I don't know anything about it, but just to be like, oh, yeah, I've been in one of them. Oh, I but, see, cool. I wouldn't let you go in without knowledge. You would, if you came out because I really appreciate you, I myself and not just Charles would take you through enough information so that when you crawled in the lodge, you were already a good mid knowledgeable. While in the lodge, the rest of it just comes to you. You realize that this is the most disconnected you've ever been from your body and the safest you've ever felt about it. Um, between the heat and the steam and the herbs, uh, it, is, it is definitely a place to let go. Um, I transmute a lot of energy right into Mother Earth. when I go to my friend's house and sweat. When I'm poor in a lodge, I don't feel that I can release anything because I don't feel like I'm there. Um, I feel like somebody else is running the show and I'm just waiting to be called. Okay, you can have your body back later. Um, but when I go to somebody else's house, I maximize that, you know, lay on the ground, cry into the dirt, anything to let it go. It was amazing. Um, I started in 2006 sweating with a friend and then I went to, um, I got clean four years later. The more I sweat, the more the drugs or medications really seem to be messing with my world. And I just kept pushing that direction. And then one day I said, you know what? This is enough. And I deaded it. I think, yeah, like I said, I know I sound like broken record, but you impressed me. You really. <laughs> and, I'm just being and there is so much more. <laughs> To this sweat lodge thing than just oh, it's falling huge. in a sweat lodge because you literally have to build it, right? Yeah, you have to build one. It'll last about four years. Up here on the hill, really three, because we get such diverse weather. So it goes through so much in the winter and then it gets all dried out in the summer, you know. So usually we rebuild every three years. Um, I'm not going to build them big anymore. I found after Charles built the small one, it's way better with fewer people in there, um, the intimacy, uh, the connection. And as the person um, holding the space, I feel like I can hear their vibration better and know if somebody needs me to open the door or, you know, I feel more aware of yeah. the people sitting with me. Um, we pray to each direction. We pray to the fire as well. When we lay the fire, we lay tobacco. Um, tobacco is very sacred. Hi, Kayla. Um, Sorry. It absorbs and holds your prayers, keeps it with you. Um, we use it to clear space before the lodge. We use it to clear space in the fire pit, asking the creepy crawlies to leave and things of that nature. We ask the ancestors to come as we place the stones in. We ask for specific ancestors to come in and work with us. And we try to lay that intent right from the get, you know, of healing of mind and body and bringing things together. Um, we, we spread so much judgment and hate in the groups that even surround us, even if we're not a part of it, it doesn't matter. That energy is out there. And so in those few moments of people trying to find their way to heal and it does hurt to heal. So let me put that out there. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. But in that process, you're creating this safe space and it's a group effort. So even if the lodge is already built, doesn't matter. It's a group effort. People are laying the fire. People are placing the stones. One person holds the space, but many have contributed to that bubble. You know, you create that energy together to link to that person holding it. And once everybody crawls into the web inside the lodge, people begin to release and you sing 
which helps you tolerate the heat, which helps you reach inside because you're singing. So you're distracted from your inner thoughts and actually releasing. You fake out all kinds of toxins. Oh my gosh, you get so detoxed from this experience. Um, and in each direction, there's different guidance as to what you're praying to. Um, my teachings, it's the golden eagle in the east. And for clarity and clear sight is a couple of the things that you seek from that direction. Um, the south is coyote. And you're seeking some love, trust, and maybe growing as a person when you're reaching that direction. Um, in the west, um, that is the bear. And he's the grizzly. And he is the leader, or not the leader. Um, the elder, I'm going to call him, of the of the animal kingdom. And he makes you look at yourself through introspection and realizing that through your experience, you have strength, a lot of strength. And then you reach to the north, which is the great white buffalo. And in that energy, you reach into your elders. So you're reaching into that winter space and looking for purity and renewal and a cleansing of spirit. And that's what we call into the lodge. And we have a song for each round. Um, some of our local lodge pourers do only um, Seneca languages or Lakota languages. Um, I, I do a mix. I am half white, mostly white, you know? So yeah, I'm not trying to appropriate any culture. The woman that taught me um, had permission to teach people like me. Because her elder, that was his goal. So grandmother wind daughter taught me and son bear taught her. All right. And they shared it with us regular people. And I do my best to share it with whatever regular people are interested. So this is a male female thing. You can, it, yes, so it's not just only guys do it or only girls do it. No. You do it together. No. Yes. Yes. Um, I just, I just had, a, I had another super important question too. Oh my gosh. I just did just like lay out a lot there. Give me a second to kind of settle. You'll feel oh, better. It, it's great. I love it. It. So, um, do you do these on certain, uh, season, a certain moon? Okay, so first I'm going to say, uh, since I turned 57, I avoid doing them in the winter. I have been known to do them on some pretty wicked Halloween nights. <laughs> okay, wait, time out. I'm sorry, yes. I don't want to stop you. I just want to okay. add, Kayla says, unless women are on their moon time. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Kayla. But you can work outside the lodge. Okay, moon time energy. Um well, because we are the most powerful being on the earth and we carry the energy to create and produce life. It is believed traditionally that women on their moon time are too powerful for men to be around. Because I've they are that. shedding the lining of that potential light. Okay. It's not my fault they're weak, though. I don't think that's fair. But so, that's... <laughs> so no women on their moon time. They, will be and now in my teaching... Right. They won't be in the sweat unless it's all women, no men on the property. Okay. And I mean, okay. no men on the property because I hear it can really mess dudes up. And I've seen it mess up some people at other ceremonies we've been to where it has caused an energetic disturbance in the force. You could just see it. The guys start getting really tired and you're like, well, oh, you know, not to make it <coughs> animalistic, but. It's pheromones everywhere. Male and female animals can smell the scent. That's right. So, I mean, I can understand where maybe something like it. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to um, when you actually do this. You said you don't like to do it in the wintertime anymore. No, it's very hard work. And all of us are getting a little bit older. And, and, and it's me. Because when you come out of the lodge, you're wet. Okay. And I, for some reason, don't have a lodge right out my back door. No, I put it on a side yard that's about 12, 600 paces, 700 paces. Is there a so, certain spot they're supposed to be in? Or you could no, literally I, have it there if you wanted to out your door. I could, but um, it's, 
I'm not getting that go ahead and build it there urge, except okay. when I'm walking through the snow. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Um, so we, I do avoid winter pours, but if somebody needs one, we'll do it. No questions asked. You need to sit in a sweat. We're on it. And we're covering the lodge and getting it ready. I've covered the lodge for friends before by myself, set fires and waited for them to get here because they needed to sweat. Here we go. Let's go. Wow. Um, but I'm the, I'm the witch on the hill. I stay out of everybody's business. And if they need something, they know where I am. It's nothing personal. Right, right. Like, Absolutely. I'm busy learning. If you guys want to tap into it, come find me. I don't drive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't I don't blame think me. a person could ever um, learn enough. I mean, you're mm -hmm. always learning. You should always yes. learn. Yes. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Agreed. Does anybody have any questions? I have one. Can I run to the bathroom, please? Oh, you absolutely can. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I had six cups of coffee. I'm sitting in bed like, no. All right, no. <laughs> Get back here. I got to put my glasses on for it because it's not how you type it. No bathroom breaks. <laughs> so let me see. We have, oh, guys, we're doing good. We have five thumbs up, five people watching right now, and it was actually higher than that earlier, too. And I think I've gone over every single thing on my list. Really? Every single thing? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, you want to check out my leather work? I brought it in the house. Oh, my gosh. You know what? I did not. That your Leather is... Hey, in underneath the top, I'm going to even show everybody, so I'm not bullshitting. It's letter work is underneath hobbies. It's A, and I totally skipped over top of it. <laughs> yes. Um, your leather work was one of the main reasons why I wanted to t bring you on here so people could see it. This is a, a pipe bag I constructed. So in my teachings, we smoke a pipe to do prayers because, again, tobacco absorbs and holds energies like intent and prayers okay so we smoke a specific pipe i'm not going to get into all of those details we don't have that kind of day um in the movies they call it a peace pipe that is totally inaccurate but it will ring in people's head okay um so this is what this bag is for so you see it's uh designed as a bag that you would carry kind of this way but everything in it you know it's not going to come out okay it's got a braided handle and braided closure straps mm. i made the buttons uh -huh. i cut the buttons out of a stick and drilled the hole wow really i want to see that again all right hang on what the, <laughs> the button buttons? yeah all right these are the buttons holy cow and then inside, I created a pouch just for um, <clears throat> the pipe is made out of a thing called pipe stone. And it can be fragile, so you're always working to take good care of it. So I made a slot that once it's bundled, it would stay oh. in this spot and hold it. Well, look at that. So it's a pretty decent size pipe head. Yes. Or they, yeah, or, no, are, it doesn't matter. It's it all depends on the person. Okay. Everybody's got something different. You know, that's what you're called to kind of thing there. You know, if you're called, mine's pretty good size. It's as big as a pancake. Really? Wow. Yeah, my hand, so, my um, hand disappears. Kayla says she wants it. It's beautiful. And it calls to her. Who said that? Kayla. Oh, <laughs> she wants it and it calls to her. It's 200 bucks, sweetheart. <laughs> It is beautiful. I love the um 
the artwork on the front of it too. Oh, thank you. Now that was Carissa. Carissa um, took my stencil and she took the Sharpie markers and colored that in for me. And she did it on both of them. So this is a drum bag or a carry everything bag, like your pipe bag and your stuff for lodge, a towel, change of clothes, that kind of stuff, right? That's this bag. Now you see, I disappear behind this bad boy. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. It's all hand stitched. Not one hole is poked. Okay. So I'll show you a seam here and you can see that not one hole has been poked. Wow. All right. It's a hundred percent hand stitched with an awe in sinew. Each each end of the sinew is um, tied and button burned, so they look like little black buttons in there. See that? I, I was getting how well that's because I've um, worked with sinew before, and if you knot it and pull it, it just comes apart. You got to burn it down to your knot, and then hit it with the bottom of your lighter, and it'll flatten right out, make a cute little button like, and that's it. You're it's not, and I use artificial sinew which definitely cooks down a little better. So a you're not better. using cat gut? No, no. Only because it's not as flexible as I would like. And this is just as sturdy because it's just as many strands. And I have found it to work very well and hold the weight. This bag will hold a ton of weight. And as you see now, there's no stitching in the handle whatsoever. The handle is laced. That's so pretty. All right. And then each side of the handle has a pocket. Oh, look at that. So each side has a little pocket. That it. is awesome. And then it shares the artwork of the same as Those the pipe are so bag. Pretty. Uh, that is Thank so you. pretty. Thank you. Yeah. And, and I get my leather from a woman on Etsy and she is fantastic. I believe it's North NYC leather. She's from North Carolina. I'll try and find her. Um, she sells them 10 pounds of leather for an incredibly good price. And <clears throat> the pieces are fabulous. I mean, this is pebbled leather. It may be powdered blue on this side, but in here, that is straight up pebbled leather. All right. So that's wow. not cheap. That's a good piece of leather. Um, yeah. And it's all upholstery leather. So it's already designed to take some pull and tug and, and I, I have I have about um seven bag originals out there um through friends and family I believe I wow. swear to it though yeah 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 some people have gotten them at like the Sundance fundraiser you know when you make a basket and so you take something that you can afford to give away but I have made sure that they've kind of made it out there. And I used to make them out of leather jackets. So those weren't as weighted. They weren't able to hold as much weight just because the leather was a little more fragile. Okay. Yeah. I don't miss ripping leather jackets apart though. So <laughs> I bet you don't. I, I bet you do don't. not. No. So that fringe that was on there, you buy it and you just, no, cut my son makes it for me. No, my son makes it for me. Really? He has a tool. So when I get the, um, yeah, hang on. Okay. When I get the pieces of leather, right, I take out what I want him to fringe and I take it over to his house. And he has this really cool tool and I get fringe. And it costs me nothing, gives him practice making it. I've got a bunch of it on hand right now. So I was going to give you a looky loo. Some of it is unfortunately tied up in the moon bag that I'm making. Kayla, I would love to see the red bag you have with the rabbit fur. Oh, that one hungry. is amazing. I bet it is good. Oh. Yeah. So my son makes this for me. This is what was braided on that one bag, this leather. It's very sturdy. Oh. And I took it to my son. It was all jagged at the bottom he's like what about it's not even i said i don't care about that when i'm done stuff's getting trimmed just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just yeah. shred it baby so he made me this ones and then i have this so there's literally a tool that makes that 
and he can adjust it. As you notice, these are different in width. The two fringes oh, here. Yeah. They're different in width because he used a different distance between the blades. So well, the dark brown is wider. That is super cool. Yeah. Yeah. I and to have it. somebody, especially a family member, who makes it instead of going and buying it. Because that, I, I know I want I, all of them too, Tammy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, for the new bag that I'm working on, and I can only show you what it looks like from the outside because it's clipped together and ready to go. My husband is painting the rings. But if you look inside here, it's full of fringe. Okay. All right. And it's the moon. So here's the dark side of the moon, which will be a this color suede when I you know flip it around. Right. And then here's the front of the moon. Right. And she will be pebbled leather when you flip it around because the moon is textured. Right. And then I've got nothing. I've got both colors fringed and attached to their opposite side. So the white side will have the gray fringe and the dark side will have the white. And my husband made the loops for the bag out of pencil rods. So it looks like twisted iron. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm getting really fucking Maybe creative. that one's mine. Oh, sorry. No, it's, I, don't worry about it. I, I'm like, I, <laughs> you should see it. some of my videos or my workout videos. I'm like, <sighs> wish somebody had a long sleeve. <laughs> it does. That is gorgeous. Thank you. So exactly you. Um, a, a drum bag or somebody's like a purse. I don't know. I got done making the two that were here and got a really strong sensation that I needed to make a moon bag. And I've been asking um, specific women, you know, what is your, what do you feel when you see the moon? You know, um, what, what energies do you feel exchanged? You know, do you, and, and I've gotten some really interesting feedback and because of the feedback, I'll be using a piece of that blue fish leather in the flap of this because water kept coming up in that description. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. I could so see I'm going to try and create a waterfall. Wow. Flap with that fish leather. And that stuff when is I first gorgeous. started Bohippian life, um, I had my husband, my husband's aunt takes beautiful pictures. And she took a photo of the full moon one time in, um, it's gorgeous. And mm. that's what I use. I use that for the longest time. And that's, uh. um, in my head, when I think of Bohippian life, I see a beautiful full moon. It's just right on. Yeah, that mm. works. That works. That is it gorgeous. Totally works. That is Thank gorgeous. You. I cannot wait to see more of your work. Um, I did one for Carissa that has a, a, a rabbit fur on it as well and accidentally made a wolf face out of it. So her bag, when the flap is closed, looks like a wolf is getting ready to eat you. That's and quite had, cool, though. I had no idea, though. And I sewed it on there three different times because I kept didn't like the way the stitching was showing up in the fur. Because, you know, I used black sinew and it was a white and black rabbit fur and it just kept showing up in the wrong place. And I had this little piece of leather that was sticking out at the bottom, right? And I'm looking at it like, mm, and my husband goes, so when did you put the wolf face in it? I went, what? <laughs> and I stepped back to his spot and went, oh, leave that shit alone. It took me a long time, <laughs> babe. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't even know I was doing it. <laughs> Thanks. Good thing you got home. <laughs> so I'm glad you brought up um, the rabbit furs. We're still talking about the rabbit fur. I am in the middle of a project. Um, I'm making some hats. Um, it's a crochet video we've been doing on YouTube for a while. And these hats require the fur pom-pom. Now, could a person like me, hypothetically, come to someone like you and say, can I have some square pieces of rabbit fur so I can make a pom-pom? You would want to talk to it? Charles. 
he might have some pelts. Or would I have to have a special license to obtain this? Nope, no, nope. you can have rabbit pelts. Rabbit pelts are not an issue. Um, you could even check crazycrow.com. They sell different levels of rabbit pelts. So they have a craft level. So that means it's not their best pelt, but if you're cutting it up, it's your best pelt. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, check check crazycrow.com. You might find exactly what you're looking for in kind of a bulk package. Yeah. And you don't have to have a you don't have to have an EIN or anything, but you do, don't you? You have a business license, don't you? Yeah. Oh yeah. girl, you'll get the better price. Fill that shit in. You'll like having them. You'll like having your number there. They have some really nice fancy craft stuff. Oh, thanks. Yeah. You're you'll you will like. Woo <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, because um, I usually just go to a craft store or a hobby store and pick them up. But um, um, I I think the rabbit. You said pelt. So mm -hmm. when you're talking, so somebody who knows what they're talking about, you don't call it fur, you don't call it rabbit hair, it is a rabbit pelt. It's a pelt because it comes with the skin on it. And if you're trying to attach it to something, you want the skin, otherwise you can't stitch it down. Also be mindful, rabbit fur is kind of thin, so you'll want something to attach to it, to attach to what you want, creating kind of a patchwork to put them together. All so right. you reinforce um, only because rabbit skin is thin. So I usually put it over leather. Just, you know, so when you're putting it on, make sure you add something, even if it's like um, a thin cardboard to give yourself something to create a bond. Okay. To thicken that skin. Yeah. It's just like the, the fish, the fish leather will require the same thing. Some kind of support. I'm glad you mentioned that because I was going to ask you about your fish leather. I've never heard of it before, and I have mentioned it to a few people, and they look at me like I'm nuts. Do you want to see it? Yeah, I would love to. Okay. Okay. You're lucky I keep my crafts in the living room, right? <laughs> I'm lucky you weren't busy today. Oh, I took time. Oh, no, wait a minute. Uh-oh. Uh, I might have put shit away. That's never good. All right. good when I put stuff um, away. We have another Dev. I'm just gonna call you Dev. Or is that I it's gotta be Dev. Hello, there. Dev. I am wonderful and I hope you are too. Okay. So this is salmon leather sent to me by an amazing um gentleman that is on Facebook. Um his name is Luis Montevias. And uh, Spirit has always directed me to watch out for him. So I've done my best to send him medicine items and just kind of do what I was directed. And I got lucky one day and he thought of me and he sent me these pieces of salmon leather. Wow. Gorgeous. Yeah. They, what? It actually <laughs> resembles a scales. Yes. Well, from what I understand, it is supposed to be. From salmon. Wow. But I don't, I, you know, I don't know how that works. I know that they're not big strips and they're not cut. You see that? They're not a cut edge. Right. Uh, um, there's some monster huge salmon out there. Right. And he sent me this whole little pouch because he knows I craft and sew leather. Wow. You see the waterfall? I do. And it's already shaped that way, so I just got to follow what's there. <laughs> um, That's great. Oh, that one's cool, too. Mm -hmm. That has got to be cooler. difficult to work with. Oh, yeah. It definitely has to be patchworked. So you definitely have to put something underneath it. And I'll usually spread out a Mod Podge or something to make sure it's nice and snug against that before I start stitching. Will you hold that other blue one up next to that? Oh my goodness. Wow. I have more. <laughs> that is That's just crazy. Here's this blue. Jeez. Right? That Wait, we're got to be it's so ex Oh, that is pretty. Mhm. Mm 
and there's a green one I'm coming to now. My daughter's favorite color was green. I am I am still knocked out. I mean, I know that I sent him a large quantity of medicine items, but to get on the list for this made me feel very privileged and special. Dev, we are showing fish sand leather. leather. Fish yes. leather. Yes, look at this one. That is gorgeous. Oh my God, that one is beautiful. <laughs> Here comes the pinkish one. Wow. Holy nice, right? I, Last I one. Of this stuff. Last one is another blue and it's kind of an ombre. Yeah. Wow. So now I haven't done anything with it yet, but as soon as I started working on the moon bag, it was clear that at least one piece of that was going in. But I also want to be careful with it. I mean, it's a it's a rarity. I want to make sure it goes into the right pieces and oh, looks man. right there. You know, it's got to be expensive. It's all out. It's got to be. I, like I said, I felt very privileged. It's like, oh my god, you're sending them to me. It is beautiful. They're beautiful pieces, and I never saw them. He just sent it. I heard of it. <laughs> so when I opened it, I was like, oh, I'm gonna pee. <laughs> that's some good stuff <laughs> I will google it Tammy I am super interested in it wow I yeah holy cow so don't mess up okay no messes <laughs> don't, no mistakes <laughs> right wow. be careful that with that pink was gorgeous well they're all it gorgeous is, yeah it was way more than I expected very grateful for him he actually taught me about things about horses that I didn't know. And I thought, you know, uh, had a little bit of expertism going on. No, no, actually I had cowboyism going on and you have to let some of that go. You know, yeah. I knew more 30 day wonders than I did people trying to build trust, you know? So there was a lot of just submit instead of, Hey, let's be friends. Hey, now do you mind if I take a ride? Hey, how about we do this? Um, so Adam's horse and I have actually become friends. I don't ask nothing of her, but everything Louise showed me based on her triggers and discomforts were just so useful. Now I go out there and kiss her on the nose and she tells me her stories of her people, you know, it's <laughs> how awful it is, but she can't live with nobody cause she's killed every male horse she's ever lived with. So you're like, yeah, no, you're going to live alone. Sorry. Uh, every once in a while you'll see a chicken, but I am not burying another horse. They're big. Oh you my know? God. I couldn't even imagine the hole you would have. Yeah. Well, right. And I got three of them, three of them buried, four of them on my property right now. Oh yeah. There's certain places in my property that are very bone meal rich. And you have a nice size property too. 3.25 acres. There's a small portion that we don't use that is, um, has easement to the hay field. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's a lot. I mow more than, uh, it's probably about two acres that I mow. Wow. I love it too. And you grow sweet grass. Yes, ma'am. I grow sweet grass. Um, so let's talk a little bit about sweet grass. All right. I got to real refill my cup, but I can keep talking while I refill. Okay. So uh, how tall do you let it get before you cut yeah. it? Well, this year I let it go a little long because I let ceremony get in my way in a vacation. So I let it get a little long. And then when it was, so I let it go. Um, my granddaughter is over six foot and it last year when we cut it on time, it was almost to her hip. Wow. So I, I let it get a good 32 inches long. Wow. Um, so, but this year, because I went late when it got long enough to cut, the weather shifted on me, which I won't be making that mistake again. It was really long sweetgrass. That was kind of cool, but it lowered my count from what would have normally been 500 braids in a season to 215. Really? Um, yeah. Now, I don't sell on the public market to anybody. I only sell to ceremonial people. Um, occasionally I will gift it. But the whole reason I started growing it is the crap they sell in the store is disgusting. 
It has no ceremonial purpose. It is allowed to turn a color that they should be ashamed of because it's a prayer tool. Um, and I just couldn't stand it. I was running a store with a friend of mine and actually, you know, I really, was really enjoying it. But every time we ordered sweetgrass, it was brown and that smells different. Okay. It feels different. It doesn't vibrate. Now, believe it or not, <laughs> I don't know how I manage this. I have some in the house right now. So sweet grass is braided by separating the strands of grass and counting out 21 strands. Then you separate them down to seven, seven, and seven to join the generations of the past and the present and the future, to join yourself, body, mind, and spirit. When you burn sweet grass, you bring the sweetness of spirit into the space and clear the negative. It is recommended by my teacher, grandmother, wind daughter, that you burn this with sage. So as you remove, you bring in. As you remove, you bring in. So you take mm -hmm. out the negative, you bring in the sweet. Now, my son braided this braid. I want you to look at the expertise in that braid. It is very pretty. It would be so much thicker if he didn't have such a tight hold on it. <laughs> it um, I like the color. And I want yes. to um, send out there real quick to Dev. Dev, um, I see a lot of your messages are getting retracted and being viewed by our moderator. I just want to throw out there that um, I am a grandma. I have eight grandkids, four kids, and um, they all watch all of my videos in my lives. So if there is, um, there must be something in there my moderator is not approving for um, grandchildren. So please respect the fact that I have grandchildren, children, and we are all married or significant mm -hmm. others. Right on. Right on. Don't oh, about oh, to be a bad so influence. Kathleen, Kayla says, Adam and I were talking about storefronts the other day. And we're wondering if you would want to do that again or not. I don't know. That's what I'm trying to put together in my little camper. So when the Airbnb is open, we'll have a gift shop right here on the property. That's great. And yeah. aren't is located like on a snowmobile trail stuff like that. right right on rails for trails there's it goes so much. right behind my house and goes right upside my house this is what it sounds like in the winter i'll be bringing my snowmobile up to visit <laughs> oh you totally can stop in for something coffee or something warm up bring your man he's cool mead mead no, I'm not, I've never had it. I'm just inviting myself. I got a couple shots of brandy, vanilla. I, I'll be there at the next family dinner. No. Right. <laughs> <laughs> With a fork. Right on. Come prepared. I will. All right. Uh, so, um, so Kayla and Adam must make stuff. Or are they? Kayla is an incredible crafter as well. She can make journals. Oh, her journals are gorgeous. Um, the leather. She has a whole different technique. And that's what's really cool about it. All of us make something. Carissa makes baskets and dabbles in acrylics. And she can paint. Um, Kayla paints. I love Kayla's paintings. Um, Adam can do whatever he wants to for as long as he wants to. And then he's done. Uh Kayla makes a lot of things, though. So, um, the one year for Yule, I saw her give out some really nice journals that were handcrafted and the leather tied and the pages, you know, bound the pages. She did all the work, um, exceptional work. She makes small bags as well, you know, like things that you would keep a pouch of tobacco in or something and dream catchers. Oh, she makes some banging dream catchers, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, well, Allison is a face painter and can handle children like nobody's business. Really? And that to me is a craft and skill all its own. 
She is wonderful. That is an awesome. There has been so many um, gatherings, functions, um, it, where kids, you know, kids are bored. Mm -hmm. But I've always thought it would be cool to have a face painter at... And she's ours. We don't, we don't have to call her. She just whips it out. When the kids start getting nuts, Allison rings them in. And we got nine grandkids. And I don't care if one of them 16. Things can still get a little nuts. Oh, oh well, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. And she can whip them right in and bring them right, right down. Where I'm like, yeah, that's, see, that's where she's doing better than me. I'd have done lost my mind and screamed at everybody. It would have been calm, but out of fear. Not oh my fun. goodness, that's great. <laughs> so um it is. so the stuff that they make, do they just generally make it and hand it and give it out to their friends and family? I put some of it on my Etsy page and I've been taking it with me to the festivals. So I've got some of her dream catchers with me at the festivals. Unfortunately, I've been hoarding some of her paintings and now they've been in a smoker's house. So I, I can't say that I can let go of them now. You know what I mean? So <laughs> that might be all about me though. <laughs> Probably should pay her for the paintings. Um, <laughs> I, I like Mr. De all right, um, Mr. Dev, um, apparently our moderators thought you were maybe, I, I cannot see. But um, again, um, there are young children, grandkids, and children who watch my videos and lives. And the moderator might have thought something was not suited for them. Um, so other than that, you are welcome here anytime you want, as long as everybody remembers um, children, grandchildren, and respect. Respect, respect, respect. But you are totally welcome here. Um, wow, what else do we have? I don't know. It's up to you. I've hit Boss. <laughs> well, we have been on here for quite a while. Yeah. An hour and 20 minutes. So maybe unless somebody has any questions, we'll just go ahead and end All our right. video. All right. Everybody can have their bathroom breaks. It is 11:42. Yeah, I think um this was a perfect did I is there anything you would like to mention? Um Get out there to people. If anybody oh, knows her Etsy store again, we put it in the comments. Um, just make sure everybody takes care of themselves. If you need a myofascial release expert, there's one in Lakewood. Sacred Winds Healing. Robert Smith. That's something I want to put out there because I know we don't take care of ourselves enough. And don't address our body in a good way all the time. You're right. You're absolutely right. So um, if anybody watching this in the future has questions for Kathleen, um, how could they get a hold of you? Um, I'm Veronica Two Feathers on Facebook. And I'm Veronica Two Feathers on Gmail. There you go. Veronica Two Feathers at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. That's me. I'm just typing it in. Thank you. Is that just not happening here today? <laughs> um, see if that is correct. Uh, maybe. Can't tell from here. Okay. <clears throat> Print's you don't spell, you don't, huh? The print was a little overlapped. I know it does that. Um, but you don't spell your name any special way. Nothing's, it's all just normal. It's, it's V-E-R-O-N-I-C-A-T-W-O-F-E-A-T-H-E-R-S. Yep, we got it. All and right, then excellent. Tammy, our moderator, threw in the Sacred Winds Healing uh, Robert Smith, the myofacial relief massage. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. Thank He's you for fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys.
Check them out. Call them up. Make an appointment. Myofacial release. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but thank you so much, Kathleen, for taking the time, almost oh, two hours, really cool. to yeah, spend awesome. with me. I right. really enjoyed it. I learned some things. And, um, yeah, I would, um, off, off camera, I've got a lot of things I'd like to talk to you about. Okay. And I cannot wait. So on that note, you guys, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you're not quite so sure if you like this type of content, don't forget to check out my playlist because I am always adding and building that. And you may find videos that you do like. So check those out before you go. Thumbs up. If you don't like it, I understand. I'll take a thumbs down as well. But I hope you guys have the best day ever. And we'll see you in the next video. All right. Everybody take care of themselves.